going to talk about soft body dynamics. Soft body is different than hard body in dynamics in that with hard body, the different sections of the object stay very stiff, very hard, very brittle. In soft body, body dynamics, you have the option of deforming the object, of twisting and bending it as if it is a flexible material. So we're going to start unloading this object called soft body. Now this is not a terribly complicated object. It is simply an extruded piece of text uh, with two different surfaces. One that's a, the one surface is soft as the gold color. The second one is blue and it's named body. That's not important right now but it will be later. So I'm going to create an animation. I want the key object, so create key, so it is right in the center, at frame 30, frame 0, I want it off the screen. So as I scrub it, it just drops into place. Now all I'm going to do, click on my properties, on my dynamics tab, and add soft, which adds soft effect. Not even changing any settings, I'm just going to click on calculate and we'll see what happens. It is applying the soft effects dynamics to this object. As we can see here, when it drops into place, it does this little wobble, this little bounce. Okay, it's not a terribly sophisticated effect. That's true. However, it is a very useful and common effect. When you have an object come flying into the screen, say at a great speed and it stops short, you have this very Bugs Bunny kind of cartoony little wobble. And sure, you could do this with, with keyframes. Move it in, set your keyframe, you know, duplicate the keyframe, set your um, your splines, your tensions, and your ins and outs. But, you know, this was like three mouse clicks. And it gets me exactly what I want. Well, maybe not exactly, but I can always change it. If I double click on soft effects, what is happening? The effect that's being applied to this object is due to this operator. And this operator, you can think of, uh, well, just call it the wobbly mode, because it makes it wobble when it lands in. And you see these peaks and valleys here? Well, that matches up pretty much with this bounce up and down. In fact, if I change my effect size, sometimes we can see instant feedback on our object. Now this doesn't always work, but it works sometimes. And when it does work, and you can see the real-time feedback, you just thank the Lord that something works in real time. So that's cool. The effect size, that's pretty easy to understand. It means how much is wobbling up and down. You can almost think of this this waveform here as the waveform you get when something is dropping in and landing in place. Wave cycles, how many times it goes up and down. Wave size, this is kind of similar to what you get when you're applying, say, ripple displacement. If you're like doing water and you want ripples, it is very similar to that. And what's nice is you can see you know, what's happening right here in the little window and get some idea what's going on. Now it's happening really fast. Another thing you can do, this is applied to all. Let's put this back to our defaults more or less. We have two operators you can apply. I'll apply this also to all, but this one I'll make the wave cycle not as many waves, but will make them last a lot longer. We'll calculate it just to make sure that our math is all nice and clean. And this might last longer than our 60 frames we have right here. Because wh what is happening is these two operators are both being applied to our object, and we're getting a fairly sophisticated wave pattern. It may not
not look like much, but trust me, you wouldn't want to do this math on your own. As long as we're playing with two different operators here, right now the, the force is being applied to the whole object at one time. It's almost like, you know, when you add a bone, you just add one bone to an object and you activate it, you move the bone and the whole object moves along with it. That's because the single force is being applied to the whole object at one time. You can apply the forces unequally to an object's geometry. And there are several different ways you can apply the forces. In this case, the force that's being applied is just this, this bouncy operator. There, you can apply it with weight maps, with point sets, and you can also use surface names, which is pretty cool. So on one operator, I'm going to apply the soft surface, and on the second one, I'm going to apply the body surface. And we'll give it two different settings for the operator, do a calculate, and what will happen is operator 1 will only apply to the surface named soft, operator 2 will only apply to the surface, na surface named body, and we can see by scrubbing it's being affected differently, and that's just the surface name, okay, and this is just a logo flying in. You know, not a big deal. It only looks a little bit different. But say you had, uh, you know, a different object. Say like a piece of clothing. Um, say like a skirt with a belt. You'd want a little bit of motion on the belt, which might be a stiffer material, but a lot looser on the cloth. And if you were in a hurry, you could just simply give the the belt surface one set of operators and the cloth a second set. So that's just using the surface names to change the operator. Now instead of using surface names, let's use something else. Let's apply it according to weight map. And we'll get to, sh to sh I'll show you the weight map in just a minute, but this object currently has a weight map that I created called soft weight and you can see it kicking in already. The soft weight, we'll apply it to both of them just for fun. What happens with a weight map is with this weight map it goes from 0 to 100 percent. It has 100 percent strength in the beginning and falls off to 0. I just did a radial fall off with the weight map and you can see what happens here comes flying in, the ends where the weight map is very light or at zero percent are very stiff. It's like it's being pinned on the end, like you're holding the end of it. In the center, it's very wobbly, and that's where wobbly operators are doing all their magic. Let's jump into Modeler and take a look at our weight map. We have weight shade. I want this to be wireframe here. Take a look at the weight shade here. Expand my window. The reason you're not seeing it is because none is selected. So I'm going to select my soft weight. Sure enough, it's very strong in the center, but very weak at the end. And when we looked at our the operators, how it was applied, the ends were pinned down middle was all wobbly going up and down. So I'm going to create a new one. I want the opposite effect. So I'm going to do a new weight map. If you've never used weight maps before, this is not the disk to where I'm going to go into weight maps. However, they are not that difficult to use. The process is you select new if you have one to work with, and I'm going to call it end weights. End weights. The initial value will be 100%, just like what we have in the center here. You see how it's red all over? We're only seeing it here because I've selected weight shade. You could see it here, but I don't want to. In my 
perspective is good enough for now. Okay, so now the same weight is applied to the whole thing. Now what I want is the opposite effect of this one where it's strong in the middle and weak at the ends. I want it to be weak in the middle and strong at the ends so the ends get all kind of wobbly. Going to my map tab, click on weights. I'm going to open up my numeric panel because I do everything numerically that I possibly can. I'm going to erase some of my my weights and I'm going to do it numerically. Oh, I need to switch to my end weights. Got my solid one here. Do it radically. Okay. So I'm going to adjust my area by right clicking on the screen and drawing it out. And that gives my area. I'm going to leave my ends hanging out. Well, no, I'll do the whole thing. Just to keep things nice and clean. Right now the change is set at zero. I'm going to type in negative 100 percent. Now what will happen once I hit apply is at the very center here it's going to apply a negative 100 percent. Now remember my initial weight map was 100 percent and by the time it gets to the end it's going to fall off to zero percent by the time it gets to this ring around here. I could play with my settings here. Sometimes it's important. It, it depends on the amount of detail you need. Um, so here I'm going to apply this setting. Negative 100%, radio fall off, apply, and look at that. Open this up. Turn off the weight so we don't do any more damage. It is at nearly full strength at the ends. By the way, if you notice this object, a little extra geometry. That's just to allow it to bend a little bit more for the soft body. But in the center, that's that's my zero weight map. By the way, you can you can have a negative power to your weight map. Uh, but I, I generally tend to stick with zero to a hundred percent. There are cases where you do want to have negative values and things get really interesting then. But right now this is my end weights as opposed to my soft weights, which is the inverse of that. So on my computer the hub tends to work most of the time, so I like using the hub. It's great when it works, let me tell you. So I'm going to synchronize with layout, which means this object will be sent to layout without actually saving it to the hard drive. I'm going to switch to layout. I still have my soft body selected. Double click on this and under my operator, I now look, end weights pops up as an option. I'm going to select end weights for both of them, do a calculate, and sure enough, I can see already my center is more or less pinned down. There's a little bit of wobbly going on, but not much. However, my ends are flopping all over the place. And that's exactly what I was going for. switch the weight maps to the end map as opposed to the one which was weights. I suppose one more step we can do here is we can apply, let's apply the same operator to both sides. However, one will have end weights and let's have the other one have the soft weight. So we're going to be mixing our weight maps. We have soft body. So even though it's one object, it's split into two surfaces. Now we have our soft weights 
doing one operator and we need to have these be different and we will calculate this so the center part will basically get a most of operator 2 and the ends will be getting most of operator 1 so this will be interesting to see how this works out well, we're getting a very interesting deformation probably more work than it's necessary but you never know you may be asked to do something like that and I'm going to add a few more keyframes just for fun and create key at 40 I also want it to be there at 40 now I'm creating a key even though it's moving you see our bounding box the actual the actual envelope the motion path is not changing the object is being deformed by the soft body dynamics I'm going to do is create a keyframe where it rotates a little bit there. See how it snapped into place? That's because now that I'm keyframing it, it's forgetting what it did before, at least some of it. I'm going to rotate it the other way. And now I definitely have to recalculate this. So it's going to move into place like it did before, but now it's going to do a little bit of a quick snap rotate and it goes all crazy. I'm going to have to extend my frames here. You'll notice when it gets past 60, which is where it was before, that's all it calculated to. So now my object is moving in, sets into place, it's going to do a really fast kind of crack the whip kind of rotate because of soft body dynamics, the centrifugal force is causing the ends to fly out. And it takes longer. Now, if this is taking forever to calculate and you don't have the time or you've already seen that you don't want it to finish and you want to move on to something else, the way to stop this calculation is to hit the control button on your keyboard. It, it's it's an odd hotkey, uh, and you can probably change it if you'd like. And everybody, I know I did for a long time, kept hitting the escape key to try to get the calculation to stop. Till I actually read the manual. Go figure. So now we can see our object moves into place. We've got the operators working on it, and it's flying all over the place. Once again, it is something you could do if you really wanted to using bones and displacement maps. But, you know, we've got these tools now. Why not use them? Look how interesting that looks. Very, very funky, very cartoony. And once it's calculated, play that wave. How cool is that? I'm going to save this. Very same scene. And we'll call it soft body rotate. And you can load this up, hit the calculate button, and you should be all set.